viewers and welcome to yet another edition of Vocations. This is where we speak about the solution vocations and every other forms of vocation that enable us to respond to God's call in living in the world. And with me today in the studio is Reverend Father Emmanuel Ilodigui. Welcome, Father. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. You have played a very, very long time. Yes, thank you very much. So, how are you doing? I am fine. I am fine. So, family is very important. So, I thank God I have the opportunity to come home to visit my brothers and sisters. So, it's a thing of joy. And to meet all the conference <laughs> yes. I worked with before I left the province. Yeah, good, good, good. I understand that you are here on holidays. Yes. And uh, I think it's after two years? Yes, yes, yes. After two after years. Two years. Uh, yes. We have Reverend Father Emmanuel with us to share his life experience, his vocation story, and his missionary vocation. And moving to Hungary, where he witnesses his vocation uh, as a salvation to the young people and everyone there in uh, Hungary. So, Padre, tell us about your vocation story, in short, in brief. Thank you very much. I will say my vocation story first started with my family. I was born and brought up in a, in a strong Catholic family, so I learned how to pray and how to go to church and serve Mass from my family. So my parents encouraged me to do this. And I thank God that they didn't only teach me how to pray, but they taught me how to, to make that faith mine. Oh, great. So that at the age of 15, 16, I was not going to church because my parents said I should go to church, but I was going because it is important for you were, for me. were convinced yes. that it's something important. Yes. So that was where it started. Then after that, when I thought of serving God, so I was like, in which way? Mm. But I had the opportunity to to speak with my spiritual director, a priest that I, I respect so much. So he was the one that recommended the Salation Congregation what to me. What did he see in you that made him recommend the Salation Congregation? He just told me the Salations, they work with youth. Okay. So I, I guess he must have uh, noticed that I, I have the charisma of working with young people. Mm. So he just said, okay, go to them, see how they live and see if this is your way of life. But before that, I had some friends that are Salation. So, so when I went to Onitia to the Salations, I was, I was so happy the way Father Nicholas Cherapika welcomed me. The first time of seeing me, he was so open. And after that also, I had the opportunity to take part in the holiday camp. And it was nice also seeing Salations among young people, not only playing with them, but also playing with them. So this was what motivated me to really kick off with the life. And the apex of the whole vocation story was when I was a, a, a missionary in Liberia for one year. Oh, so you that, went to Liberia for yes, oh, yes, 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 yes. So because after my philosophical studies, I was sent to Liberia. So there also, uh, my, my faith and my vocation became more strong wow. because I met young people that were affected by Ebola, by war. So, you know, their way of thinking sometimes is not like ours, that they witness all these, all these things. But... Uh, you mean ours, you mean Nigerians? Yeah, Nigerians. Yeah, we witnessed Ebola, but not like Liberia. Exactly. Liberia, it was a very, very sad story. And I was sent there a month before the news came out that Ebola was not disturbing so much. Oh. So I still met the young people that lost their parents, the young people that were on the street, despite the fact they had a home. So this strengthened my vocation. Seeing these young people, despite the fact that they are in pain, but they still make time for God. They still make time, they still smile. They still want to do something good. So this strengthened more my vocation and my faith as a Catholic. Great. Now, the missionary vocation, how did it come about? Where did this stem from? Oh, is it because of the Liberia story or there's something different? It's interesting because before I was sent to Liberia, I applied for mission. Oh. Then the provincial wrote the rector major that we still have a lot of work in the province. And we applied three of us. So it was like, it will not be good to take three persons. So that was why only one of us went. And the rector major asked the provincial to send us in the mission areas in the province. So that was how I went to Liberia. So after Liberia, 
the provincial still asked me if you still have the desire for mission you can reapply to the rector major so i applied for mission two times but what was the motivation when i joined the the solution congregation and also i saw some of the missionary brothers and the priests working in the province and they always tell us that in their places like europe and other parts of the world that uh, they don't have priests and religious to work in the solution houses what touched me so much was when they pointed out that some of our houses were being closed down because of the lack of solution presence closed down sold and leased out for various yeah. kind of activities. activities some were i know some were turned to library and some became a hotel but because wow. these are huge huge buildings so i was like we need to go and help i need to go and help because i can only decide for myself but when I had this feeling, you know, the fear of the unknown came in. Yeah. What if they send me to a place where they don't speak English language? Oh, okay. So that means nothing. I cannot do anything. So I was like, okay, this is not for me. Even the, the Igbo language and the English language, I know I am not perfect in it. Yeah. Talk more of learning a new language. But you know, when God calls, he keeps on reminding us. He respects our decision, but he keeps on reminding us. So that's why the fact I tried to wave this idea, it was still in me that we need to go to help somewhere. So that was how I made the decision. I spoke with the provincial again. I spoke with the priest missionaries and brothers, and uh, they advised me, if you feel that this is your call, you can apply to the rector major and keep praying and see what God is planning for you. So I prayed a lot. I, I, I thought about it so much and I took the decision that I still want to, to make myself available. So this was how I left the province for mission. Wow, that is wonderful. We could hear from the Reverend Father Emmanuel Inodigui his vocation story, which began from his family, and secondly, his salvation vocation, now his missionary vocation. Now, Father Emmanuel Inodigui was sent to Tell us the Hungarian experience. How was it for you? It was nice. It was nice. Oh, I yeah. not was. You are still there. Yes, yes, yes. How yes. is it? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I first of all, I would like to point out that I like Nigeria so much. It is good to be home. It is good to work at home. But I felt that God is calling me to go somewhere to help, and my culture and my tradition and my Nigerian identity is still with me wherever I go. But in 2016, when I wrote the rector major, I didn't stipulate where I would like to go. I just wrote an open letter to send me anywhere in the world where a missionary is needed. So I got the email that I was sent to Hungary. So immediately I asked Mr. Gogol <laughs> what he knew about Hungarian culture. And I saw a lot of things about, about the culture of the people, the goodness of the people, the beautiful city they have, like Budapest and other cities. But when I arrived, I must confess that the welcoming was so good. I did not feel that I am in another environment. I felt that I am a Catholic in a Catholic environment, that I am at home. People came at the airport to pick me. Even some people came to Rome where we did the missionary cross, to, uh, the missionary cross to, to travel with me to Hungary because we went by car. It's not so far from, oh, yeah. from Rome. It's eight hours, nine hours from Rome. So when I arrived, you can imagine the welcoming to the extent that parishioners from the parish were, were uh, approaching me asking, do you have winter clothes? Is it so cold for you? We can get you some if you like. That's part the fact that they knew that the community will also provide all these things, but they still took it to themselves to show that sign of, of, of affection. And this was so kind. So arriving was so good. And uh, after that now, I started facing the, the reality, okay. <laughs> the cultural difference and also the language, you know, Hungarian is one of the hardest languages. Yes, I in saw the... in uh, this uh, website, bitbeats.com, mm -hmm. a language uh, um, website where you study mm -hmm. languages and mm -hmm. all of that, and it said that uh, the Hungarian language is the hardest language in the world for English speakers. Yeah. How true is that? It is true because 
when you speak english you you just speak like this but when you translate the same thing you spoke in english language it's as if you are translating from back to this way and also some of the the, the conjunctions they add it up so a word may be very long you think it's a sentence it's like it's a word just like somebody one. just one word somebody some a word like uh, this is a word which means bless you when you sneeze or or what did you say? <laughs> yes. so it's a word yes yes it's like it's, it's something they use for when somebody sneezes they say yeah. bless you or, or good health yeah. and all this so it's really a tough language but what I saw in it is that uh, when God calls you, He gives you all the instrument you need to work for Him. The only thing needed is that you need to be patient, to be humble, and to just say yes to Him. Be available. And be available. 2016, when I arrived, you can imagine at the age of 26, it's as if I started life newly. I had the diploma in my pocket after studying philosophy, you know, great thinker. I worked in Liberia in the youth center where we organized programs for almost 500, 600 young people. But I arrived in an environment where I had the knowledge, the skills, but I cannot do anything because I don't know the language. And that was where I learned that when God calls us to something and he gives us the grace, he equally invites us to be patient and to say yes. And if he demands us starting new, just to start because he is the one that, that called. So, so I would say this was how I learned the language. Yes, I went to a language school. For one year, I was going to school in the morning. Morning, afternoon, I go to school. I, I wrote exams. And after that, I was sent to work in a technical school. My work was, uh, I worked as a, a, <laughs> a free time program organizer. So the idea is to have a solution present in the school. So I had a, 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 a room where it's called Don Bosco Room. Mm -hmm. Students can come there, we can play, we can chat, we can, they can warm their food, we eat together. But the only thing we don't commit sin. The only thing we, we pray and we, we share ideas and, and that was very nice. Mm -hmm. So they knew there is a free place in the school where you can go and a solution is always there to chat with you to laugh with you and also to cry with you because sometimes they come in with difficult situation within the family or somebody died and and we closed the door and we had a, a very good chat and we prayed together. So, so it was hard to start with the language also, but by His grace. That is why I normally say to people in, in, in Pigeon English, Na grace they carry me go. It's not by my power, it's just, it's just God. It's just God and His grace. Yeah. Great. Now, you've been in Hungary, a new place, new environment, new city, even with all the more coming and good wishes and, uh, uh, that you gained or you enjoyed from the people. What were your, the first cultural shocks that you had? The, it, it's, it's interesting to know that uh, a European culture and the African culture is totally different. You know, in Africa, we are more vibrant. We, it doesn't disturb anybody if uh, the neighbor is, uh, if I'm greeting somebody downstairs and the person is upstairs, we just chat, we laugh, life continues. So in the European culture and also in the Hungarian culture, things are so diplomatic. Oh. You understand? So if you want to visit somebody, you first of all call that person on phone and tell the person, despite the fact you are at the gate, mm -hmm. you don't come in if the person don't tell you to come in. Despite the fact you are friends, mm -hmm. you need to call the person. You need to, okay, I'm at the gate and I would like to come to say hello. The person may say, oh, okay, please don't come because um, I, I am doing something. Or you just speak on phone or we we'll just go to take a coffee. The person will come out and you go together to a coffee shop to chat and to take a, take a coffee. So, into the house. You are not coming into the house. So this uh, diplomatic way of doing things, it was, it was a bit hard for me to, to understand. Coming from an African culture yeah. where you, it's, this is not a problem. It's interesting to know that <laughs> this is actually like present here, in, I mean mm -hmm. in Africa, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. let me say Nigeria mm -hmm. and some other parts of mm -hmm. Africa. This same way of doing things mm -hmm. now, it's mm -hmm. like coming here. It is coming here. Uh, yeah. If I, a little bit of digression, mm -hmm. do you think it is something that we should imbibe 
as Africa? No, diplomacy it's, um, is good because that was even what I wanted to say. You know, why first of all they don't tell you to come in is that when they invite you in their home, they clean everywhere and they show you all the rooms in the house. Mm. That is, that is invitation. That is their culture. You don't only come, you sit in the parlor, you eat. No. They take you to the, okay, this is the room for my child. This is our room, all the room. And that means that you are not an outsider. You are an, you are an insider. So they can share all the, or everything with you. Then after that, now they take you to the table. They serve food and mm -hmm. you, you eat, you stay as much as you like. So that is why they don't, uh, because it, just to come in, because they want to prepare. Exactly. They don't want you to just come in and they, you just chat with them. No, no, no. Coming in means that, okay, you are part of our family. That's we welcome deep. you so much. And, and in that aspect, but, but, but when I didn't understand this, I was like, why should I need to call in order to, yeah. So I, I, I believe that in our own environment also, that diplomacy is very important cool. because you don't know what people are passing through. You don't know, maybe you see them outside, they look good, but you don't know how their home looks like. Exactly. And maybe they don't like, want you to see that they don't have a nice seat in their house. Mm -hmm. They want to prepare in order to welcome you. So in that way, I see it to be something nice, but despite that also, so it was difficult for you. Yeah, it was I difficult mean, at the beginning. Yeah. At the beginning. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. These are wonderful uh, stories to to lean on, and I believe our viewers uh, listening and they will get one or two uh, cues from mm -hmm. what you have said, inspiration for what you have said, and uh, I don't know. Let me just ask, but I can already gets the feeling from you that okay let me ask are you happy in Hong Kong or are you happy doing your missionary work there yes yes I am I am very very happy when I say I'm very very happy it doesn't mean that I don't have challenges I face challenges when you also asked about the cultural shock I also face challenges that sometimes uh, people that have not seen an African before the way they look at you You'll be thinking that they are looking down on you, okay. but they've not seen an African. That was why they're looking at you that way. <laughs> so, so most times, most times when when I see this kind of look, I just uh, I just greet them, okay. and we start convers conversation. Mm -hmm. Oh, you oh, you have his life in Africa and all these things, but it's also something that is not so so nice. I used to tell them also that you see people, you don't first of all look at them. What is this person is up to? You just feel That's free with people. Sure, no? Yeah, 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 yeah. And and that is also part of their distance. So so it's also I face this challenge. But uh, but I must say that this is everywhere. This is everywhere. When you are in a new place, especially where where people that have not seen your type of person, they are so curious to understand what you are up to. But the source of my joy is that. Um, I am able to live out the call mm. as a solution. I am able to not only to work with young people, but to serve with young people. You know, Europe is an environment where now Christianity is going down. I'm not the only one saying it, even if you look at the internet, Christianity is going down. And that is why I want to encourage all Africans, all Nigerians to live our faith with joy, because Europe is learning from us. They see us as good example. They see our faith as very strong. That is why a lot of them come for missionary work here as a medical missionary. And when they go back home, their story is not the same. The faith in Europe is going down and Africans are the one now strengthening the faith in Europe. So this was one thing that, uh, that I enjoyed so much that made me happy to see that I am able to live out my mission as a solution. Thank God in Hungary, we still have the opportunity to organize holiday camps. Mm. We work with youths. We organize youth festivals. We organize a lot of program, but not only organizing for us to come and dance, but for us to pray. It is great because we, have a, we normally have a youth festival during summer because a lot of festival in the country during summer. And in this festival where we dance, we jump, we go to swim, we do a lot of things, we have one evening 
that is a recollection evening we of all the music adoration confession and the young people are coming we have a space of 200 young people the one we organize from the age of 15 to 18 even they overbook the place a lot of young people they are curious they want to serve god they want to pray but they need someone to give them that opportunity and this is what we are providing so this is what gives me joy that despite the wave in europe that christianity is going down that young people don't go to church i still see a lot of young people eager to come and pray great thank you very much for this wonderful uh, explanation sharing of your experience in hungary your total the total vocation story the total vocation story we are happy to in fact it's inspiring uh, i will i will tell you that it's really really inspiring i would like you to say last words to a young uh, converts old who want to dive into the vocation of uh, this missionary vocation those who want to do uh, go to the missions and uh, they are still not sure mm -hmm. don't know what to do uh, is it okay will it be okay is my motivation uh, really the right motivations to do that and all that so what are your uh, last words for these uh, persons conference who want to dive into the uh, missionary vocation and salvation prayer prayer and prayer we are called to serve and not to be served. Every solution is a, is a missionary in the environment that he is serving. But some people got that um, calling from God to go to serve somewhere. If you feel that you are called, create time for prayer. Because if you don't pray when you go to the mission, it will be difficult. It's prayer. Prayer and prayer. That's the three things that uh, Father Emmanuel Lodigo is saying that uh, for those who want to uh, enter into this realm <laughs> or this level of uh, missionary uh, vocation, inside the solution vocation, just be prayerful and uh, you get that which God wants you to do. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Father. Father Emmanuel, for <laughs> passing by at 43 Media Studio. And we hope to see you again when next you come into the country. Thank you. God so bless you. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. God bless thank the good so. work you do. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. This is where we call it a wrap on this episode of Vocations. Do well to subscribe to our YouTube channels and follow us on all our social media handles. Till next time. Bye. Give him heart.